I think to some extent the camp program saved my life. Uh, it, gave, it gave me a sense of work ethic, uh, ties to the community. Um, it gave me a, a, another sense of worth. Um, with that though, I do believe that the camp system has its challenges and has its flaws. I was not only doing wildland firefighting, I was doing search and rescue. I was, I was doing fuels reduction projects, clearing up the forest. I was building baseball fields for children. We fought structure fires, so homes, vehicle fires. We responded to medical calls in people's homes. We were first responders at car accidents. We were on call 24 seven, seven days a week, but we only got paid 53 cents an hour for eight hours a day for five days a week. My check was $56 a month, so about 37 cents an hour or something. And I was the top paid engineer there. Cal Fire is currently hiring for the firefighters that are not incarcerated in camps. The average pay for that person, the base pay, I believe, is $3,700 a month without overtime. Compared to the same person who is getting $2 a day and maybe a dollar an hour on a fire. COVID prompted leadership to step forward and release people that were safe to be in community. Like we should have done that before COVID. In 2014, um, Kamala Harris is, uh, you know, was attorney general at the time and her, you know, lawyers really argued against um, release of um, kind of lower level minimum security prisoners because it would greatly reduce the fire force. That is so horrifying to me. We were deemed safe enough to be working in the community. We were deemed safe enough to go into people's home. We were actually low level enough to have been at home with our families. We were retained to do a job that they didn't want to pay anybody else to do. You are, are only as valuable as what you save the state, you know? not in the work that you do or who you are as an individual and the personal change that you make. And so it's a little bit of a slap in the face. So what you actually see is the state's dependence on this group of people, right? Now agencies are having to take unprecedented steps, right? They have to go through these, these massive hiring cycles to go hire all of these folks professionally. We feel like the first batch of people that we should look, look at are the, are the people who already have the skills and who've already proven that they can go do the job effectively. There's a very, only a few narrow pathways for people to transition into the space. And the possibilities looked like, you know, um, Cal Fire seasonal work, which was remote and pretty low pay and, you know, you dispatch for months at a time, which um, doesn't make sense for folks that are on parole. It doesn't make sense for someone like me who just spent seven years away from my children. We would not be eligible um, to, to work at, at uh, any municipal fire department because we had restrictions from getting EMT licensures. You need seven to 10 years of clearance from all charges um, and probation and parole before even being considered for the license and then once considered there's a high probability of people to get denied i've only been out um seven months now and every day I still feel like I'm responsible if I smell smoke. I would ask people to recognize that the folks who are currently in fire camp ha have already been deemed and are currently working as public servants to the state of California. Leadership needs to sit down and really restructure this program. And we need to figure out how do we expand the firefighters in California while not perpetuating a system of slave labor.